Hello everybody, in the previous video we learned about the skeleton tool which is perfect for when we're animating something with rigid bodies but sometimes we might want to animate something which is not rigid but which is flexible for that we're going to use the plastic tool so I decided to animate a tentacle which is the first thing that comes to mind when I think of a super flexible thing also because it's inspired by one of my favorite games Maniac Mansion Day of the Tentacle. Okay, to animate this tentacle monster, the first thing we're gonna do is import one tentacle. As you can see, I have both a PNG and the original SVG, which you can use if you want to modify the tentacle for whatever reason. So I'm just gonna click and drag the tentacle to the X sheet and click on import as usual. I've already done it before, so I'm just going to keep the existing file. Okay, uh, first thing I want to do is go to the plastic tool. Make sure that you have this PNG selected. And I'm going to click on create mesh. Once I click on create mesh, I get this pop-up and it shows uh, how much detail the mesh is going to control. This is quite a lot. It's more than necessary. It doesn't really harm, but uh, just to be a bit easier on my CPU, I'm going to make it a bit bigger and it will probably not have a big impact on my uh, on the quality. And I also want to decrease the margin. I'm just going to put it down to one pixel margin to make it hug more closely with the PNG. And once I've picked out a nice mesh, I'm going to click on apply. And once I've applied the mesh, I can go to build skeleton. And I'm going to build a skeleton which is linked to this mesh. You can also make a mesh if you need, you can also make a skeleton if you need uh, like this with multiple branches. But in this case, I only need one because I only have one tentacle. So I'm going to control Z this. And once you've built the skeleton, I'm going to go to animate. And by an with animate, you can see I can make a really cool, like super creepy skeleton movements it's pretty useful for all sorts of things for example you can even think of a dog's tail wagging or whatever let me control z it back to build skeleton you can see we've got also an option to allow stretching that means i can stretch the bones go to animate and then click and move but don't forget to unclick keep distance i'm able to not only move it around i can stretch this tentacle which is even more gross than it was before there. i'm gonna control that this and we're gonna go to back to uh build skeleton and i'm gonna click on remove allow stretching and now you can see that we can still uh we're still not keeping distance but the picture doesn't follow so let's just keep that on to keep it a bit more clear okay next let's have a quick look at paint rigid so for example uh, when i move this vertex let's have a look at uh, what happens over here and over here you can see that the outer side that this side is also moving a little bit and this side is also moving and also all the way down here it's also moving because of the particulars of how the mesh works but what if hypothetically I don't want this part to move when I'm moving here and maybe I don't want uh, this outer side to move so for that I can paint rigid. Click on paint rigid and uh, set 
the thickness of your brush over here and you can either paint rigid to make it red or paint it flex to make it green again. Rigid means it's less likely to move and flex means it's more likely to move. So let's just paint this outer part red and let's paint red down here as well. So when I move this, it's not going to move this one as much, but it's going to move it over here a bit more uh, because to compensate. So let's go to animate. And as you can see, this part is totally rigid. But as a consequence, it's going to like fall over here, which you might actually want that or you might actually not want that. That's a creative choice, but we have that choice. Once we move over here, it is going to actually have to treat it like a, like a classical bone. So it does move, but it becomes more rigid. Okay, so next we're going to actually animate this tentacle so that he creeps up on our uh, character, giving him a big fright. But don't worry, this is a very friendly tentacle. He's just going to get a fright, but that's all that's going to happen to our poor guy. There's two things that might go. Okay, first of all, let's get rid of this uh, keyframes. And let's just select these two frames and click Control X. And I'm going to move up to over here. This is where we're going to start seeing uh, the tentacle creeping up on him. Unfortunately, we see that when we cut and paste, uh, we lost the connection between the mesh and the PNG in the stage schematic. That means we also lost our skeleton structure. So the first thing we have to do is reconnect it in the stage schematic, making sure that the mesh is the parent of the PNG. And then we have to rebuild the bone. And next, I want to rotate both these columns so that it's vertical and also flip it horizontally. So I'm going to go to the Animate tool and I'm going to go to Scale and I'm going to flip it horizontally. Be careful, you have to do this to the Mesh column. If you did it to the PNG column, the mesh will not follow. That's because the mesh is higher up in the hierarchy. So do all these transformations to the mesh column. So in other words, we can use the skeleton to control the mesh and the mesh controls the PNG below it. Now that we have the skeleton set up, we can use it to create the animation.
Okay, and that's it for animating the tentacle. There's only one thing missing. We've got to animate his mouth so that it is in sync with what he's saying. And that is exactly what we're going to do in the next video. So, see you there. Bye for now.